So hi everyone, my name is Ravis and I teach philosophy and literature and in this video I will talk about Nietzsche and the death of God. So it's quite, uh, I think most of us know uh, the Nietzsche's statement, Nietzsche's most famous statement where he says the God is dead, right? And we will come to that. also one of my favorite philosopher and I have studied him uh, ever since I was 21 years of age. So every time I, you know, many people have asked me how should I start reading, uh, start reading Nietzsche. So I tell them that uh, try reading Nietzsche uh, in comparison to Zorin Kierkegaard because, uh, because Nietzsche is basically a, a kind of alter ego, he is, an, he is a kind of an alter ego of Kierkegaard because what Kierkegaard uh, was writing is a kind of uh, you know inverted in Nietzsche's thoughts because Nietzsche's thought is completely different from what Kierkegaard was saying right and uh, Nietzsche is also very important because Nietzsche questions the authority of uh, Christian uh, doctrine or the Christian philosophy or the Christian or, or, or let's say the uh, the modern theology right now Nietzsche, he was remarkably uh, an original thinker, and when I say this, uh, I say it with uh, 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 with so much power. I say it with so much, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, with so much energy because he was indeed a, a very uh, remarkable, uh, remarkably original thinker, right? And he was very extremism. He was very extreme. Uh, some people uh, would even say he was a madman, as 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 you treat if you read gay science, because this video is more concerned with the gay science, and I will just give you an overview of a gay science, as well as I will also talk about uh, uh, the death of God, how Nietzsche is linked with the death of God, and so uh, Nietzsche is one of the primary existentialist thinker, and uh, when we talk about existentialism uh, in philosophy or even in literature, we talk about uh, Nietzsche, we think about Nietzsche and we think about Kierkegaard. So as I said in the beginning of this lecture, that uh, when you read Nietzsche, uh, I, would, I would suggest you to, I would urge you to read Nietzsche along with the Kierkegaard because, because Kierkegaard or let's say Nietzsche is an alter ego of Kierkegaard, right? So Nietzsche is also important uh, and he's also radical in, in a sense because he he sort of you know questioned the authority of uh, the Christian domination or the Christian doctrine and uh, he decided to abandon the entire Christian tradition you know uh, and, it, and its antiquity and its moral sense because whatever Christianity whatever the moral ideas Christianity gave or three upon the humanity uh, is kind of is kind of inverted in, in Nietzsche's ideology because Nietzsche wanted to scrap Nietzsche wanted to remove all the ideas uh, that Christianity gives us, right? And uh, it's it's also very important because uh, because uh, at the end Nietzsche Nietzsche is most concerned. Nietzsche is more concerned with the power. And uh, before before Nietzsche, the power relies in Christian doctrine, right? Because uh, because you know uh, because because you see the the power. Uh, it was uh, within the Christian doctrine, within the Christian, uh, let's say, uh, 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 the, the places like church, the places where uh, where a high priest lives, right? So they have the most power. But Nietzsche, he, repra he replace, replaces religion with art, and the the uh, you know, and along with that, as soon as he replaces religion with the art, along with that, the power was replaced by the art. Now he was trying to find the power, he was trying to find uh, the motive, he was trying to find the passion uh, within art, not through the religious, uh, you know, religious norms, but through the artistic norms, right? And, uh, you know, uh, one of the most, uh, you know, controversial or let's say least understood or l most criticized, you can say, a uh, statement that Nietzsche says uh, in gay science. If if you get a chance, then please go do read the gay science. 
uh, I will, I will, I will, uh, you can see the, the, the book here. I will just uh, upload the book. So in the gay science, Nietzsche writes that uh, he, he kind of gave a statement that God is dead. And, uh, and he, when he said the God is dead, he wasn't saying that I kill the God. Because many people, uh, in, in, if you go on the internet, then you would find that many people uh, say that Nietzsche killed the God, right? There's, there's a meme also uh, where you will find that, <laughs> that it says that Nietzsche says God is dead and now Nietzsche is dead. But, uh, but let's forget about the meme because meme is just a bad way of expressing any philosopher's, any philosopher's ideas uh, as I believe. But what I'm trying to say is uh, the God was already dead before Nietzsche, before Nietzsche wrote uh, in his book Gay Science. Right? And I will just read it out uh, what Nietzsche says. He says, uh, he says that God is dead and God remains dead. Uh, just a second. Uh, he says that, yeah, he says that God is dead and God remains dead and we have killed him. It's, it's, it's not like Nietzsche killed him, we have, we people have killed him. How shall we console ourselves, the mudgers of all mudgers, the holiest and the mightiest that the world has seen, has bled to death under our knife? Who will wipe the blood from us? With what water could we cleanse ourselves? You see, he says, is this magnitude of deed too great for us? Isn't it? Isn't it? And he says, Shall we not ourselves have to become God merely to see worthy of it? Since uh, the humanity have killed the God, as Nietzsche says, because Nietzsche did not say that I killed the God, he says that the, because because he was the first person who could see uh, uh, who could see the cracks between the Christianity, who could see the cracks between the the doctrine of Christianity, between the ideas, between the philosophy of all the you know all the past thinkers like in. Uh, in Plato, Socrates, because he hated Socrates, and I will come to that. Uh, he specifically says that I hate Socrates, and why does he hate him? And I will come to that again. Sorry. So you see, he knew he was the first person. He is also very important in the in the modern time because because he is highly influential. I don't think uh, there is any philosopher more influential than Nietzsche in the modern time. And uh, he could see, he could see inside the cracks of the Christianity, and that's when he says God is dead, because the previous people, the previous generation has already killed the God, and now he is here to deliver the the masses. So uh, there is this one uh, madman. He comes to the uh, he comes to the city uh, with with a lantern in, in you know in a broad daylight, and the lantern is lit, and he says, uh, and uh, let's say this is a lantern, and he says, Have you seen God? Have you seen God? He cries. Uh, you know, in, in the marketplace, and he says, have you seen the God? Have you seen the God? You know, and, uh, uh, you know, when people sees him, when people, uh, you know, people surrounds him and people laughs at him because, because they think that he's a mad. Uh, I mean, he's saying a God is dead. I mean, look at him. Uh, uh, he's, he's having a lantern in his hand and he's asking about the God. Have, have you seen the God? Have you, uh, uh, has God, uh, you know, has God just, uh, you know, back into the place? Has he, has he, gone to somewhere else so so then he says uh, you know when he did not get any response from the people uh, you know from from the marketplace then he says he, he threw his lantern and he says I have come too early you see that's an oxymoron statement <laughs> anyway uh, he says that I have come too early I'm not yet at the right time he says he said the masses the masses of the death of God hasn't reached to these people, these people don't know what what they are dealing with. These people have no idea that God has already been dead and He has already been buried. And uh, this is a massive destruction for the Christianity, for the Christian uh, uh, morality, right? And He says that in the same way, you know, lightning and thunder need time because you see, first we see the lightning and the and the thunder follows it, right? Because the speed of light is far greater than the speed of thunder. So he says, I have come too early. And maybe because that's why I'm asking the question, do you not know that God is dead? And the people has no idea. People have no idea that God has already been dead and it has already been buried. And, uh, <clears throat> and he says uh, that, you know, yeah, and you see, 
now if the god is dead now if let's say uh, if nietzsche is true if nietzsche is true the the christian morality the christian ideology if god is dead then christian ideology and christian morality is dead with the god right because everything that comes with the god has to be dead uh, along with the god right and if you say that jesus died at the age of 23 and 5 uh, at the age of uh, 23 and half almost uh, before 24 year of age right so he was amateur because if you read uh, antichrist there's a book called antichrist by uh, written by nietzsche and you will find that he specifically writes that statement that god must be amateur because he died at the age of a very young age and it's true i mean in modern time let's see i'm sure uh, uh, most of us even i'm 24 years of age uh, so i know myself that i'm not that intellectual i cannot uh, you know see am i intelligent you know i cannot uh, uh, say people that i'm i'm i have learned everything now i can you know, tell everything uh, to the people and whatever i say uh, people will become a kind of you know a, a great statement that doesn't that doesn't happen right so so anyway now now uh nietzsche nietzsche in his book uh, there are couple of works that nietzsche uh, like in beyond good and evil and antichrist and the genealogy of morals uh nietzsche was trying to uh, express and he further you know he he went further uh, with his criticism uh, against uh, you know the authority of uh, the authority of god and the authority of uh, uh, and the question of faith actually in the in the western uh, you know in the western country you would find that christianity was prevailing and even today uh, now anyway what i'm trying to say is that uh, what nietzsche was thinking nietzsche was trying to replace like since the god is dead since he has come and uh, since he is telling people since he is uh, you know as a messenger you know think nietzsche as a messenger and uh, since he is a messenger and he is delivering this uh, this you know this news Uh, this sad news to the people that god has already been dead now now what should you be doing what should you do right that is the that is the main concern when god is dead when the entire morality the when in, in, when the entire you know moral concept moral authority is already dead then how shall we come uh, you know how shall we come out from all of it that, that's when nietzsche says uh, at the end of his statement shall we not ourselves become god he doesn't mean to say that so we all so we all not become god in god itself but he is trying to say that uh, this is where his idea of ubermensch comes in you know it's a, it's an idea if you translate it, it into english then you will find uh, it says superman it's not the superman of dc comics it's a superman uh, 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 that that goes beyond its capability that any human can you know uh, any human can uh, become a superman you know like for instance if a teacher wants to teach someone so teacher has a power to uh, deliver his lecture and he has a passion to deliver his lecture to somebody for instance i want to teach philosophy and i have this passion for teaching and studying philosophy so this passion this idea uh, uh, that can be uh, you know that can be put uh, 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 that can be put forth and that can help so many people you know in this way nietzsche nietzsche wants to say anyone and everyone can become ubermensch can achieve a ubermensch you know can achieve that power so so this is where he says we all have to become god ourselves you know and uh, yeah so and one more thing when i say nietzsche was a uh, highly radical is because he was a person you know because it is very difficult to you know uh, directly question the authority of god it is very difficult to you know go against or let's say the abolish the entire uh, religion because you see uh, saying that god doesn't exist is a different thing right i mean if i say if somebody says that god doesn't exist even i am a uh, i don't know i won't say whether i am an atheist or agnostic just i will leave it to the debate Uh, let's say if some person says that god is dead or i do not believe in god that god doesn't exist but completely abolishing the religion itself is a two different thing right because it takes courage it takes uh, uh, a lot of you know immense power uh, to to you know to completely abolish the entire religious system right this is what nietzsche was doing he was abolishing the entire christian authority the entire christian doctrine the entire christian morality and he wanted to uh, develop he wanted to create his own you know 
a, a kind of substitute to this to, to this morality and that's when he came up with a book called Das Spoke Zarathustra and believe me uh, Das Spoke Zarathustra was basically a book was basically a book that was intended to replace the bible this is what he meant i mean when he wrote this book he says this is my masterpiece you know if you read the ecce homo sometimes it says ecce ecce homo or you can say ecce homo both are the correct pronunciation pronunciation so you see uh, nietzsche was trying to create a different sets of morality uh, uh, through which a person can achieve the ubermens through which a person can you know uh, uh, can again gain a different kind of morality uh, from the from the christianity because christianity as nietzsche believes that it is it is dead and it is it has a negative uh, you know implications on human beings and it has a it has a great sense of and i will give one idea because if you read uh, uh, on the genealogy of morality third essay so in the third essay nietzsche says that uh, you know the people especially the stoke uh, especially the people you know who believes and who uh, try to you know suppress their ideas suppress their you know suppress their desires are the worst kind of people and this is what christianity does this is what religious does because in religion suppose if you follow any religion uh, for that sense whether it's christianity whether it's muslim muslims are the worst i guess because if you read uh, they have so much uh, 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 like contradiction within themselves and I'm, I'm not making any uh, statement here so please uh, forgive me about that but i've read most of the uh, uh, most of the religious book and this is what i find anyway so if you read any religious book whether it's bible whether it's a uh, 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 gita whether it's you know Quran, you will find that uh, there are so many things that that are being imposed on an individual, and they are trying to uh, tell you not to do this, not to do that, and they are trying to uh, you know uh, uh, oppress your ideas, oppress your uh, let's say uh, they are trying to oppress your desires, and these people, these are the worst kind of people because they are trying to uh, you know. Uh, kind of they are, they are putting some kind of limitations on your desires and this is this is where nietzsche says this is what christianity does especially that is what christianity has been doing for centuries so we need to abolish these ideas and we need to bring uh, some different kind of doctrine and uh, each an individual can do that each an indi individual can uh, you know become god in itself right so uh, now now gay science because this video is concerned with the death of god and uh, and also a kind of introduction to the gay science in the gay science actually marks a decisive step uh, you know a step beyond the books that came before it because it has a two different uh, a kind of set of ideas that nietzsche brings forth uh, and it's very important one which is the death of god that i that i that i i i mean i'm speaking uh, in this particular lecture and the second is eternal reappearance so i will come to that because this is going to be a series video because i am willing to make uh, you know more such videos if you guys follow more if you guys if you, if you guys would love this lecture then i will make more uh, you know such lectures on on this platform uh, especially on nature because my concern is with, my concern is with nature because i've read the entire uh, nature ideology so so yeah now i will also talk about uh, like how and why nietzsche hated socrates because you see nietzschean ideas is quite similar to how socrates was writing and socrates was also one of the great greatest master uh, uh, of aristotle right of plato sorry and then uh, from plato there was an aristotle so so you see uh, nietzsche hated socrates Uh, uh, because he was so much jealous of Socrates, you know. This is what I believe. Because this is what I found. Because uh, when you read gay science, you you would find a extreme sense of hatred, not hatred, but extreme sense uh, sense of jealousy uh, uh, between the Socratic the the Socratic idea. Because Socrates, he was a kind of master in irony. So everything he says uh, a kind of ironical statement. so because it's a dialectical and when we when we talk about dialectical we talk about irony because there is there will always be a different different opinions there is always be a different uh, opinion than whatever you are saying like for instance you know the irony the, the the word irony means right so what nietzsche was doing nietzsche kind of you know uh, uh, replaces irony with oxymoron 
this is what we call you know he uses aphorism in his entire in his entire philosophical writing and he's also a great poet he is a, he is a marvelous poet he is one of the greatest poet and, and you know if nietzsche was not a philosopher then he would still be as famous as a poet you know because because he was not just a philosopher he was a poet philosopher this is what he calls because the way he mastered the phrase the way he mastered because because he mastered the mastered the the the, the you know the idea the writing of uh, of oxymorons the use of oxymorons in his writing because you know the oxymoron the word oxymoron simply means putting two different different words uh, putting two uh, putting two like uh, inverse word all together like cold fire you see fire cannot be cold right so this is what oxymoron is uh, so another example i can give you is uh, heavenly death death cannot be heavenly can it be right and uh, sometimes uh, we also say uh, pretty ugly so that is pretty ugly is again an oxymoron statement putting two uh, putting two opposite word uh, with one word you know and that is what oxymoron is and it, it, it is more poetic you see it, it has a poetic sense when we say oh see the pretty ugly i mean pretty ugly you see or let's say if we say oh that particular thing is a pretty ugly you see that is a poetry isn't it so so yeah now uh, now aphorism now i'll also talk about aphorism a little bit because i think uh, some of the people still uh, you know um, still doesn't know what aphorism is because most of the time when you would, when you would be reading nietzsche and i highly urge you to read nietzsche because once you read nietzsche uh, i i'm telling you that you would become a fan of philosophy not especially the uh, nietzschean philosophy or existential philosophy but but you will get the sense Uh, and you will become a rebel you will you will be a rebellion you know you will try to question the authority of everything so aphorism is basically a, a, a kind of you know highly esteemed and compact witty statement you know and uh, uh, and if you go back to greek then they are saying pithy statement which means that it is a it is it is a brief it has kind of isolated from one one another and it has a witty witty means it's funny and it's a uh, sarcastic and it's a philosophical so so yeah this is what and and these are uh, this aphorism is basically written uh, uh, for the for the intellectual people for the for for those who know already for those who already know the background because if you read nietzsche you have to know the background you have to read plato for that you have to read socrates for that you have to read all the western thoughts and especially pre Uh, 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 you know pre greek thoughts pre pre uh, let's say let's say old uh, philosophical ideas you need to understand all those things you need to uh, read all those things in order to understand nietzsche now uh, i think uh, that's all for today and i'll see you in the next one with another lecture and if i get more support from this video then i will make sure to bring more such lectures especially on nietzsche and on the gay science thanks for watching